Okay, with here with Sean O'Reilly and Victoria Lynn, um, both owners of the Southern Extreme Professional Wrestling League here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, let's start out by what, what's the history of the league? Um, my father and I started it down in Florida in about 2013 because he was one of the smaller guys. Uh, he didn't get many opportunities himself, so he wanted to start a company that included everybody. Short, small, big guys, little guys, females, um, non-binary. He wanted to give everybody a home for the outcasts. So we started it out as a family thing and it kind of grew from there. And then, um, when, when did it start? I know it had another name first and then it changed to the next team. We started as Entertainment One Wrestling um, under Hurricane Bob. Uh, he actually passed away and when he passed away, the company was given to us and my dad turned it into Southern Extreme because he was a part of ECW in the early days and he wanted to show appreciation and homage to his history. And how, how many years have, has it been going we're going on 10 years this year. It'll be 10 years in August. Okay. From the first name and to yep. this name. Okay. Okay, 10 years. Um, let's let's talk about maybe you you've been in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I'm I mean, Sean, you you've been around many places. Um, you you lived in Wyoming for some years. And then because your parents were in the military, you you moved around a lot, but then you did a lot of your years living in the South. Yeah, uh, I grew up here uh, off and on as I was younger due to the Air Force. Um, and then in 09, I was actually living in Utah when I found and started uh, my wrestling career. Okay. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, when in 09, uh, I was living in Utah, a friend of mine, a co-worker, actually brought me to a company called UCW Zero in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's actually where I met my trainer, Martin Casaus, uh, who is known for in Lucha Underground as Marty the Moth Martinez. Uh, he started me off in 09 in Salt Lake City, was there for about a year and then moved down to Mississippi on the Gulf Coast where I finished off training under Chris Black for uh, Southern, Southern Championship Wrestling. Um, and then just been all over this Gulf Coast since then. And from, so from 2010 to now, I've been all up and down the Gulf Coast. And then afterwards, after that time, you what, moved to Florida? Yeah, when move of, uh, moved to Florida, I uh, found out there was a little bit more wrestling there. Uh, moved down there where I met Victoria and her dad um, at uh, SXBW. Uh, started working for them uh, and created a friendship with these two. Um, so it was it was a lot of fun down in Florida. <laughs> and um, a lot of people would probably wonder, okay, why why are you in Wyoming right now? Uh, we moved up here three years ago uh, due to family issues uh, with my mother. She needed help uh, with somebody to help her out because she shattered her ankle about three years ago. So we moved up here um, so I could help her out, take care of her. And actually my mom was actually the one that told us that we needed to start running wrestling up here because there was nothing up here for the kids. Okay. Um, so we segue into... This right now, tomorrow is going to be your f fifth show here. You started last year in April, mm -hmm. so this is a one year an an anniversary show basically. Yep. Yep. Uh, your birthday has been yeah. talked about, <laughs> yeah. it so happens to be, and everything. Uh, you already did four shows, um, but you guys been doing shows in Florida already for many yeah. years. Um, so. So minus the location, Florida, Wyoming, um, what, was, what was the biggest challenges of having shows here? Probably the snow and the rapid changing weather because in Florida it was rain, it was easy. Snow makes it a little harder for our workers to get here, uh, makes it a little harder transporting the ring. It's a fun time trying to transport that in a blizzard. Okay. Um, 
Speaking about the ring, you you guys own your own ring? No, we rent actually okay. from a promoter in Denver. He runs Primos. Okay. Uh, I am the provider. Okay, yeah. He provides us our ring right now. Okay, okay. And um, so, like I said before, you 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 guys did it for many years now. Um, n nothing really. I mean, working with the wrestlers and everything like that. Um, or this stuff costs money to put on yeah. Every, oh, yeah. <laughs> everything right yeah. so I mean I, I never did it before I mean what's the biggest cost to running a show for venue. you guys venue and promoting um, okay you have to pay for flyers you have to pay for the ads uh, radio ads newspaper ads um, you gotta rent the venue itself and you gotta hope you promote well enough to make your money back. Mm hmm And um, the talent, like we talked about, mm -hmm. um, there's many wrestlers. Yes. And the good thing is we have a lot of good wrestlers in Colorado. Yep. Uh, we got some coming up from Utah. Yep. Um, you, you did book some big names yep. throughout these four shows. Um, Latimer, Adonis, Matt Cross, Matt Matt Cross, yeah, all all them. Um, who do you who do you go through to ask for talent like that to come over here? Uh, Matt, uh, Chris Adonis, uh, also known was formerly known as Chris Masters back in the WWE era. Um, he actually got stumbled upon me from Killian. Uh, Killian stumbled upon his email address and was talking to him. Uh, Latimer, the same way, Killian uh, was emailing him and talking to him. Matt Cross. Actually reached out to me on Instagram. Matt Cross actually reached out to us and I actually know Matt Cross on a personal level. He was on uh, Tough Enough with my trainer back in 2009 when Stone Cold Steve Austin was hosting it. Mm. Um, and he's well known internationally as well. Um, and I know he came to UCW one time and just been friends with them ever since. Um, so he was he wasn't hard to get a hold of. Um, there's different ways to book big names like that. Uh, Chris and Tom. Um, normally you have to go through an agency, or you can normally hit them up on their social media sites if you're lucky to get that. Um, so it's it's difficult, but not difficult at the same time. So, right, I, me, listen to the podcast, everything I get my hands on, YouTube, whatever. It's a lot of relationships. Yes. And that's how you get people, um, you know, uh, you know somebody and then somebody needs to work a show, whatever, and then it's about relationships, right? Yes. Uh Tom and I actually text back and forth every now and then. He checks up on me and, you know, see how everything's going, and I do the same thing with him because he just uh, re-signed with the NWA. So um, every now and then I'll get a text from him asking how everything's going and when he and when can he come back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, depending on certain wrestlers, yes. how far out some of these guys are booked. Yeah. E each weekend from from the first of the year to w whenever yep. how you know I you uh, so Gino Rivera is, is normally booked up along with Manny Lemons so when we get dates like we got at the YMCA where we're running now uh, when I got the dates all the way up until November they were the first two guys I emailed the dates to mm -hmm. or sent the dates to um, yeah. and then they picked and choose the dates on when they can come because um, they are booked up um throughout the year so it's really one of those where if we put on a show I message talent see if they're available for that if they're not then I move on to the next worker okay now let's speak about the why when I saw the posting that you got the why for the whole year and everything yeah. like that I kind of sense I had vibes that it was a really large moment mm -hmm. for you guys having it booked for the whole year listen to the podcast um, you were able to get your dates yes as far as I can feel for the why how big was that the why is the share is the same values as us we want to keep the kids off the street we want to give them something safe to do somewhere to be for the night so they're not out 
getting into trouble so they're not out being bored. They have something fun to do for a couple hours and they can just forget the world for a little bit. That's what we do, is when we're at a wrestling show, it's just wrestling. It's no stress, there's nothing wrong with our lives. It's just wrestling, friends, family, and we're all together. And then um, when you went to the Y and had a meeting with them initially and say, hey, we, we own a wrestling promotion, what, what was the uh, re reception? They, they, they were iffy about it until they did their research on us. Um, then when we started talking more about running one time and then see where it goes from there. And then, you know, we did, the, we did that and then we actually ended up getting more dates after that. Okay. So, uh, so we did something correctly that they liked. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about running the first show yep. was the last one. Yes. So you got, but um, you you already had dates already. I mean, we had dates that we wanted. Okay. And they wrote them all down and they basically said, hey, if we do a family show, we'll continue. Okay. Okay. And Mr. And Skip was just as excited to give the kids something else to do because he feels just as passionately as we do about the children of the community. Okay. No, that's good. I mean. Um, me, I just got back into wrestling, really. Um, I seen your ads last year uh, on Facebook. I wasn't really a fan then, but I had a friend that was a fan, so I kept on sending messages. Hey, there's a show here, there's a show here. Um, but then I started seeing more ads, and I'm like, um, I'm going to go to a show. And I start becoming a fan, start listening to everything on podcasts, YouTube, and everything like that, and now I'm here. So... Um, I, 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 for me, it, it, this is good. What, what's local? I'm a racing fan, but I have to drive maybe an hour and a half away. But now it's just minutes away from my place, you know, right here. So, um, as far as the YMCA, is there any restrictions? No blood. What are you talking about? No okay. blood. Okay. Uh, okay. We can't do our hardcore stuff here, which is fine. Uh, yeah. It's not really kid friendly, so we're doing our more kid friendly events the Y. Um, we're hoping to possibly find a venue during the summer to where we can start doing the more adult themed shows because that's his specialty is the hardcore work. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, we're happy where we are. And if you've never seen a show before, I'd say come out once and see what we're about. Give us a chance.